One blood glucose spike is no big deal. Your body is designed for one, even two. What it's not designed for is 20 or 30 each day. That's what it's not able to manage. A blood glucose spike tells the body, hey, there's more energy coming in. I need to generate a higher insulin response in order to be able to clear it. There is a feedback mechanism between the glucose rise and the insulin response. But then that's supposed to solve the problem. When those glucose spikes keep coming, when the ultra processed food keeps coming, when those glucose spikes start occurring at 20 to 30 per day instead of one to two, you're going to alter uh, nitric oxide synthase, you're going to alter blood pressure, you're going to start to alter pancreatic sufficiency. You're not going to be able to put out enough insulin for the level of glucose. And when that happens, you develop both uh, hyperglycemia, which has its own negative impacts because glucose starts entering into cells that don't need it, like for instance, muscle, where it gets laid down as fat. And now you've got fat in the muscle, you've got intramyocellular lipid, which ultimately leads to metabolic dysfunction and weakness, by the way, especially in the, uh, in the heart and leads to heart failure. And you have increased insulin release, which is driving more energy into adipose tissue. But that insulin is also a signaling molecule for cell growth. Cell growth at the level of glands. And when glands grow, there's a chance for cancer. So increased insulin means increased cancer incidence. And in addition, coronary smooth muscle increases as well. And so you get increased vascular smooth muscle proliferation. You get atherosclerosis because of that insulin response because of the glucose rise. So you can see that that glucose excursion by changing the endothelial uh, response and by changing the insulin response is driving all of these chronic metabolic diseases that we've been talking about. So type 2 diabetes is ultimately the pancreas not being able to keep up with the insulin demands based on insulin resistance. Hypertension is because of the endothelin one problem and the uh, nitric oxide problem of the high glucose. Mitochondrial dysfunction because the mitochondria can't handle all of the energy that's being dumped into it. And so a lot of that gets converted to fat instead. And so you end up with liver fat, which ultimately leads to fatty liver disease and metabolic dysfunction and risk for type 2 diabetes. Insulin resistance because your insulin is now not working well because there's fat in your liver. Uh, you have problems with uh, membrane stability because of the lack of omega-3s that are leading to reduction in neural transmission and also reduction in cardiovascular protection. Inflammation because of the high blood glucose actually impacting on immune cells. That, and causing them to release TNF-alpha and IL-6, these cytokines that drive uh, systemic inflammation. You have methylation because glucose is a driver of methylation all by itself. And finally, autophagy. High blood glucose interferes with the ability to recycle defective mitochondria and defective uh, lipid peroxidation and protein denaturation end products. Bottom line, this phenomenon of metabolic syndrome, this phenomenon of mitochondrial insufficiency, this phenomenon of glucose excess excursion without an appropriate insulin response is the driver of 75% of healthcare costs in America today. So everyone wants to stop this process before it gets started. So how do you know 
if you're on the road to type 2 diabetes. Obviously, you want to veer off that road before you get there. What are the warning signs? How can you tell? Well, there are a couple of ways. You're not going to see it in your lab tests. Your doctor's not going to be able to tell you because they don't know what lab tests to draw and they don't know how to interpret. I'm going to give you some tips in a few minutes. But in the meantime, what would you feel like? The first thing you would feel is tired. And the reason you feel tired is because your mitochondria are not making enough ATP. If you find that you are waking up in the morning and not feeling refreshed, there's a good chance that you've got mitochondrial dysfunction. Second, reduction in uh, uh, exercise capacity. This may also be due to the inability to re, uh, create enough ATP. A third possibility, irritability. If you find yourself eating something and feeling better because you ate something, and then an hour and a half later feeling irritable again, there's a good chance that you were insulin resistant and that's why you needed the pick-me-up. And because of the delayed insulin response, you've actually driven your blood glucose lower than baseline, which is the reason you feel irritable. This is known as reactive hypoglycemia and is a harbinger of metabolic dysfunction going forward in the future. A fifth way would be if you had increased uh, uh, cravings, especially around 3 or 4 p.m. in the afternoon because you have run out of energy and your body is basically calling for a snack. You shouldn't need that snack. And lastly is lack of sleep. If you find yourself waking up in the middle of the night, there's a very good chance you're not driving enough ATP generation while you're asleep and your body is reacting negatively to that.